hi guys welcome to this channel in this video i'm going to be discussing about design of slab and beam using the design chart in my previous videos i've already discussed about design chart which i use it to design an roc column this is very common as we know design chart are basically used for designing columns because using design equation and other equation tends to be rigorous so it's always easier to make use of the design chart the same thing can actually be applied to slab and beam but it is just a little bit restricted compared to using the design formulas for slab and beams we all know design formulas are common for slab and beams but for you to use the design chart you have to satisfy one or two conditions so just like we have in columns we have various design method that we use in design so basically we have the design equations which are usually prescribed by the design code example is for bs code we have bs 8110 which describe various design formulas for slab and beams and also the formulas for designing beam and slab is this basically the same because a slab is treated like a beam in design so you can also make use of the design chart by constructing a moment and axial load interactions this is actually applied for slab and beam where you know that the dominant effect on the slab or the beam is the bending moment you know when you are designing a slab the only thing we design slab for is the bending moment most of the time we neglect the axial load because we ensure that in the general arrangement of our building we avoid concentrated load on slab so in that case we have limited Exile load to design for in terms of slab, but in terms of beam, where the beam is subjected to both bending moment and axial load. So constructing a moment and interaction diagram is also applicable in beam design. So in this video, we'll be looking at design of a singly reinforced section, which can actually be for beam or for slab. Then the third design method is the approximate method. So one thing you have to understand in using design chart is for beams or for slab is you have to be able to categorize your section into either singly reinforced or doubly reinforced. In design of slab, it is always advisable for designer to design slab in order to make this slab economical and also easier in construction. So most of the time our slab are usually considered to be singly reinforced. Singly reinforced in the sense that it only requires tension reinforcement so this diagram show a typical example of a singly reinforced section in which the main reinforcement is placed at the bottom of the of the section so it can either be for beam or for slab but when you say a slab is doubly reinforced so a doubly reinforced slab or a doubly reinforced beam is a section that have reinforcement in both the tension zone and the compression zone so the bottom side of the reinforcement provides a main reinforcement which are usually designed against then for the compression zone where we have you now have to provide compression reinforcement which is also designed against so this design chart is actually provided in bs 8110 part 3 so in this video we are going to be looking at the singly reinforced section part so in our subsequent video i'm going to talk about the doubly reinforced section as well so this is a typical design chart for a singly reinforced section for beams the singly reinforced section is actually divided into two it is divided based on the characteristic strength of steel so we have a chart for fy of 250 and you also have a chart for fy of 460 you can see the example i'm showing you here is an fy of 460. then you also have a moment so what you have to do in order to make use of this chart is you can use this singly reinforced section or singly reinforced beam to design a slab because we know technically a beam is a slab is designed like a beam the only difference is you take the width of the slab to be one meter so that's just the difference between a slab and beam in design so in that case you can use a a design chart for a singly reinforced beam to design a slab because you already know slab are usually singly reinforced but when you now want to talk about in design of beam you first of all need to categorize your beam to either be 
singly reinforced or doubly reinforced and that can actually be done using by determining the k factor so the k factor depending on the design code you are using so if you are using the 8110 the k factor has a value of 0.156 so when it is greater than that that means your section is doubly reinforced but when it is less than that that means you can design your section to be singly reinforced so proceeding with this let's now take a work example so that this will be much more clearer if this is your first time on this channel before we take a work example kindly hit the like button on this video so that much pe more people can get to watch the video and you can also like to subscribe if you are getting value from what i'm showing you at Chevin academy we talk about structural design and civil engineering design which also include infrastructural design so you can check out our website chevinacademy.com for more content on civil engineering so let us take an example of a singly reinforced section in this part we are going to be looking at a slab because we all know generally we design slab to be singly reinforced so let's take a slab thickness of 150 millimeters and also let's say a bending moment of 20 kilonewton meter is exerted on the slab we all know in design for slab what is paramount is the bending moment we really design for the axial load because they are always really small and are negligible so then let's take our fcu to be 30 newton per millimeter square and our fy to be 460 newton per millimeter square so the next thing you have to do is to establish the design parameters so the design parameter the first of them is the b you know we are designing a slab depending on the size of the slab we always take our b to be one meters because slab are designed per meter run so b is going to be 1000 millimeters then your h is equal to 150 that is the thickness of the slab then you take you cannot calculate your d your d is equals to cover minus half diameter of bar in this case because this is a slab there is no need to provide for shearlings so that's why in the calculation for the effective depth you make use of 150 and then cover and then the half diameter of bar so assuming a cover of 25 and also a bar size of 12 millimeters you are going to end up with a d value of 124 millimeters so from there you cannot calculate the vertical part of the graph which is the moment over bd square so converting your moment to newton millimeters because the value of m over bd square in the graph is newton per millimeter square so you have to multiply to 10 raised power of 6 your b is 1 meters your effective depth is 124 then you square it then this is going to give you 1.3 newton per millimeter square so the only thing you have to do in the graph is to read this value moment over bd square against the characteristic strength of concrete in this design the characteristic strength of concrete is 30 then to select the singly reinforced design chart you use it has to depend on the fy the fy in this case is 460 so all you have to do is to go to this particular chart fy is 460 all you have to do is you have to read your m over bd square along the vertical direction and read it against each of these lines so you can see that the range of fcu that you have is from 25 to 40. so if you want to design a section with an fcu higher than 40 newton per meter square so it's better for you to use the design equation but the thing is the design code is very fast all you just have to do is read x against y and then you get your area of reinforcement so along the y vertices i'm going to read 1.3 so this is one definitely this is going to be 1.1 this is 1.2 and the line is on 1.3 then you have to read it against the line fcu equals 30 this is fcu equals 30 yeah so you trace this line down you can see that almost all of them intersected after the point zero about the point zero point five downward so if you read this now x and y intersected at this point so reading this to the vertical which is equals to the area of reinforcement multiplied by 100 divided by bd so that means along the this factor 100 as over bd is equal to 0 0.35 because this is 0 0.5 this is definitely going to be 0 0.1 this is 0 0.2 0 
0 0.3 0 0.4 and what we read was between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 and almost halfway so therefore we assume 0 0.35 so that means at the end of the day we are going to have 100 asc over bd equals to k k is whatever we read along the horizontal direction so and k from this reading k is equals to 0 0.35 so definitely you can make as a set of formula because that is exactly what we are looking for so on as is equals to 0 0.35 bd over 100 then you cannot calculate as which is 0 0.35 multiplied by b which is one meter multiply by d which is 125 divided by 100 so at the end of the day you end up with an area of 434 millimeter square you can actually check this by using the design equation so at the end of the day we are going to provide a t size of reinforcement a t12 that is 12 millimeters reinforcement at a spacing of 200 millimeters center to center the area of this is 565 millimeter per square Per millimeter square so this is how you can design a singly reinforced section using the design chart you can also design a beam the same way the only difference in this case is the b for the beam is going to be the width of your beam so let's say your beam is 230 by 450 230 is going to be the width of the beam that is your b is going to be 230 in that case and then d is going to be the depth of the beam which is 450 so it's the same process you get m over bd square you read it against your fcu and then you get the value of k slot it in inside this formula and you cannot determine the area of reinforcement so if you find this video helpful kindly hit the subscribe button you can also share this video with your friends and don't forget to check out my website chevdinacademy.com for civil engineering design thank you see you in the next time